Please try not to fall asleep uh, with the dim lights, guys. We got some good video for you. I gotta say this again. Good afternoon, everybody. You guys awake? Come on. Good afternoon. I'm sorry, I'm a car guy. When it gets quiet, I get nervous. Philosophies, policies, practices. This is the Automotive Management Minute with Richard Busio. With all the buzz in social media, we hear this term reputation management. What, what does it mean? Well, here at Rick Case, we have a simple core philosophy, and that's to treat every customer as if they were your best friend. And that's been our foundation since the doors opened in 1962. Rick has always believed that the customer comes first, and you have to treat the customer right from the dealer's perspective. So whether it's the good, the bad, or the ugly, we want to hear what our customers have to say. We can't fix what we don't know. And like every good friendship, you're going to have your fights. But it's how you recover from that that really sets you apart from the rest. So what we do is we try to provide our guests with a lot of different options so we can get that opinion flown. So whether it's dealer rating, business rating, Google, Edmunds, Yelp, or any of the online resources that there are, we all realize that it all starts with the people at the dealership. We want to hear what they did good, but more importantly, we want to hear what we didn't do good. We're going to improve on it, and we're going to make sure that the next time they come back, we're going to give them a reason to become our rating fans. We realize that when you convert an unhappy customer to a rating fan, that's much more powerful than any dollar you can spend in advertising. In order to be successful in reputation management, there has to be a culture change in the dealership. And every team member, from myself all the way down, has to be empowered to resolve any situation that comes with the customer. And if they can't, they have to take it to the next person up to make sure it gets handled. In short, reputation management starts with the dealership. Create the culture, empower your people to fix any problem, and make sure you listen to your customer's voice. So guys, um, that's just a quick video on what we do at Rick Case and how we feel about reputation management. For, but for you to truly understand how we handle reputation management, you need to get a little bit of perspective on Rick Case. And you know, we're a store just like everybody else. We're a small little store in Davie, Florida. We, uh, we have uh, about 200,000 square feet of space in that facility. And we have a beautiful parking deck. We have a free car wash for all our customers. We have a discounted gas station. We have a, a, a hair salon to get your hair cut. You can uh, renew your tag. You can get married at our store. We have at least 50 weddings every single month. And uh, you can service your car. We have a body shop. And of course, sometimes people even want to buy cars at Rick Hayes. So it's, it's really a nice little place. And, we're very proud of some of the things we've been able to accomplish. We've been the number one Honda store in Florida since Rick opened the store in 2002. In addition, we've been the number one Honda store in the Southeast since 2002 as well. And uh, since 2008, we've been the number one Honda net profit store in the United States. Rick, as he reminds me every month, no matter how good I do, holds the record for 1,221 cars in one single month uh, for Honda. I mean, that's a lot of cars. And, you know, we can't do any of this without a great team. And that great team, you know, is in every single department, is every employee from the person that cleans the floor to the porters, all the way up the ladder. And because we have such a great team, we've been able to do great things with customer service, like hit the President's Award for four years consecutive working on our fit. For those of you that are Honda stores, you know these scores. You know, 99.8 out of 10 customers are happy with rate case and sales. 92.1 in rapid response and 96.8. All fantastic, all above standard. Our, co we, we, our core philosophy is to treat our customers like they're our best friends. And this isn't just something we say. This is something we do with every single customer. Whether it's me or any of my managers, even my salespeople, they understand that if there's a problem, it's going to get fixed. Currently, the Southeast, we're number one, and that's fantastic. And through our efforts, we were even able to accomplish number one in the country in the month of June, and we were very proud of that fact. Um, and we did it with good customer service. And we employed a lot of reputation management techniques to get there, which I'm going to share with you a little bit later. The problem with Rick Case and, and the problem we had 
when we were looking at this whole reputation management and how it worked was, you know, we had a great reputation. Everybody knew who Rick Case was. We spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on TV to say we got the best prices, the best warranty. We have a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty. Five year roadside assistance, discounted gas, free car washes for life, discounts on all your service and parts and accessories. I mean, we had a unique buying proposition that everybody knew. You turn on the radio, you'd hear us on the radio. You turn on the TV, you'd hear us on the TV. And then what happened is you'd go to the internet, and this is what you see. A nice little shack, you Google Rick Case, and you would find every negative review known to mankind. I didn't know there were that many unhappy people in Broward County. And all of them were motivated enough to put reviews about Rick Case. And we quickly, we quickly found that when we started to deep dive, we had outdated posts. We had negative content everywhere. We had pissed off customers at rickcase.com. I mean, people created websites about us. But yet, we're 98.2% in CSI. So that point two was making a bigger noise on the digital space than the nine people on the regular space. We had absolutely no, no substance. We had lack of response on any problem because I didn't know we had problems because we were pretty ignorant to the fact that we had no consistent social media strategy. We used to think that reputation management and social media was just another venue to put good ads on there with great product to try to sell cars. That's what we thought. Fortunately, we went to several conferences like this one where we got some great ideas, we educated ourselves, and we kind of changed our little process a little bit. So this is what would happen. You know, we spend several hundred thousand dollars on TV, not a cheap meeting, but we use it because in our market we have to. And people would see these great ads and they say, man, let's go to Google and type in Rick Case. Then they'd type in Rick Case and forget the negative reviews, they'd get my competitors. So when I talk about no digital print, we had zero digital print. It just wasn't acceptable. So whenever we have a problem and we want to fix it, you need to find out what your point A is. And we use at our store what we call a SWOT approach. And that's nothing more than looking at your strengths, understanding your weaknesses, fo focusing on, on your opportunities, and realizing what your threats are in the market. Because believe me, there are many. And we had some great strengths. We had a large database. Over 100,000 customers in our database. Rick did a phenomenal job marketing and got plenty of customers in. We had a great real world reputation. If you know about Rick Case, you know he's a good person. He cares about the community, he cares about the people. And in the real world, everybody knew about it. The problem is, I mean, I don't know if you guys saw Grant's presentation this morning. We went to dinner last night, and he wasn't too happy with the sushi restaurant. I don't know if you've seen how many negative videos and reviews he's posted already on that restaurant. I can only imagine someone coming into Aria and saying, man, what's a good place? Guarantee you they're not going to go eat sushi. So we'll pay. You know, we'll pay, you know we, we don't want to pay attention to the reviews, but have you ever read a negative review and gone to a restaurant? I mean, I don't. When my wife says, hey, I want to go eat Italian, I'm like, okay, where do you want to go? Oh, I want to go to this place down on South Beach. All right, let's take a look at it. You look up at the reviews, if the reviews are bad, you're just not going. So here's a restaurant. We're talking about a car dealership, and we had no strategy. We had a great facility, and at our facility, we have over 1,000 customers that come in every day. Now, they may be coming to get a haircut, they may be coming to get married, but they're coming in, and it's a great, it was a great opportunity for us. We had 400 quality employees, and we all know the power of the employee. They work for us, they work with us, they're part of our team, they want us to be successful. We had our unique buying proposition, our Rick Case Rewards, and we had an in-house video company that produced several videos, some of which we'll show you today. So our weaknesses were, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. We did not understand what reputation management was and what, so, what a social media strategy was. It all sounded great. We had no reliable vendor partners and we weren't consistent in anything we were doing. Like, we thought that reputation management was, okay, we need surveys. Okay, what do we need surveys on? We need surveys on Google. Okay, everybody, tell your customers you need surveys on Google. We'd go to Google, everybody would try to get surveys on Google, and then we'd get them up and two days later, Google would take them off. It just didn't work. We didn't get it. And there were great opportunities. We, were, we knew that we could leverage our production company to really create that positive content and get that on the dig digital space so people could see who we really were. We knew that if we took advantage of the technologies that are out there with some of the vendors that are here today, that we could really turn it around. And we wanted to leverage all of our employees' relationships in the social space. People buy from friends. 
We wanted to be everybody's friend. But we did have some threats. The negative content on the social sites dominated the Google space. We had a very small digital signature. I'd say it was non-existent. I think if you type Rick Case Honda, I think our website page was like at the bottom of page one. It was crazy. We had dated product. I mean, the Honda Accord was on the last year of its model cycle. Thank God the new one's coming out on the 15th, and it's gorgeous, guys. If you haven't seen it, take a look at it. It is phenomenal. The Civic. We didn't have the launch we wanted with the Civic. Honda wasn't happy. Our product was not hot. Everybody was talking about Hyundai, Kia, and everything else. And Honda, who had always been at the forefront, wasn't there anymore. To top it off, my wonderful entrepreneurial boss decided he wanted to open up an open point for the largest Volkswagen dealership right next door to mine. Not exactly something I was really looking forward to compete against. So we knew we had to get started, and we had to get started right away. So Rick Case's reviews, like I said, sucked. It didn't matter whether he went to Google, Facebook, Yelp, wherever it was, it just wasn't, it, it wasn't good. And it just wasn't, it wasn't acceptable. So when we looked at that, we thought about what is a review? And a review is a customer expressing how they feel. Would you guys agree with that? Now let's talk about, you can't fix how they feel, but you can sure as heck look back what precedes a review. And what precedes a review is an expression. A customer wanting to express themselves for an experience they had. But if you take it a little step back and you go a little back, there's an experience that they had. And if you take it back even further, it's how you executed your strategy if you even had a strategy. So we quickly realized that just trying to manage your reviews was a band-aid on the problem. If you wanted to fix the problem, you needed to create a social media reputation management strategy that you could train everybody on to, tr to get you back on the right track. Now, the first thing we did is we evaluated everybody. Because those who think that you can just go into one site and fix your reputation, guys, it's not going to work. It's not a Google. It's not a Facebook. It's not a Yelp. It's not a business raider. It's not a dealer raider. It's not any of the 25 review sites that are out there. It's all of the sites. And the problem is, we don't know which ones are going to pop up. Because Google's constantly changing the rules to the game. So we need to get good at all of the sites. And the only way you can do that is by drilling down on a strategy, knowing what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, delivering a world-class experience so your customers become raving fans and express how they feel. So what were the customers saying? We evaluated everything. We wanted to know what was good. We wanted to know what was bad. We definitely wanted to know what was bad. Because through the bad is where you can grow. We wanted to know what they were posting. We wanted to know how visible was that negative content. So what we did is we worked with several companies to get some dashboards that could pull all that data for us so we knew where we had to work on and what we had to work on. And it worked great, guys. We immediately identified where our opportunities were and we started to work on it. And we created a strategy. So once we knew what we were gonna do and how we were gonna do it, then it was just simple. We knew that we had to increase our visibility of positive content. Duh, right? No brainer. Well, how we were gonna do it? We knew that we had a video company. So let's start to post positive content on Facebook that people are interested in seeing, on Google, on YouTube, and let's get it out everywhere. So we wanted to leverage our dealership, let everybody know that we're committed to that five-star customer service. We wanted to scream it loud and proud. We wanted every one of our employees to get involved, and we got them involved. In June, we did a phenomenal campaign through Facebook where 200 of our employees assisted us in becoming number one in the country. And we definitely wanted to leverage our customers. Not just the 100,000 that we have in our database, but the 1,000 that we have coming in every single day. We wanted our friends and followers to want to become part of our society. We didn't want our social media or our reputation management to be a way to sell cars. We wanted it to be a community where everybody got involved in what we were doing at Rick Case and felt proud to be there. 
So that way, when we had an event every now and then, maybe once a quarter, maybe once a year, it meant something to every one of them, and it was something that they were going to promote because they felt good about it. We looked at Facebook, and these are some pretty good examples. With Facebook, this is a customer. This is one of my salespeople, Sharon. She's my finance secretary. And at the kickoff meeting, we gave them, we gave them the links for, for the banners for our employee pricing. They went, you know, she went on, guys, we have crazy deals. You pay what I pay. Let me know if you're interested. She sold four cars. It's an employee. Each employee has 350 customers on Facebook. Their friends have 300 customers or 300 potential customers on Facebook. Their friends have 300 potential cars on Facebook. Guys, get your people involved. And then we created videos. We wanted to create video content that our consumers wanted to watch. So this is an example of a video. One of the things we do differently here at Red Case is we believe in getting customers involved. You know, when you talk trade appraisals, it's always a hot topic, and everybody has a different procedure for what you would do. Let me tell you what we do. First, we keep our guests engaged from the start. Everyone's always wondering where that mystery appraiser is, what they're doing, how they're figuring out what they're doing and how they're getting them out. We get the guests involved. We have the salesperson take the guest to the appraiser. Let the customer see what the appraiser's doing. Let them see and let the appraiser interact with them and ask questions on maybe any dents, scratches, accidents, or noises that we might find in the vehicle. You'd be surprised. The customers might evaluate their car, or they might give us a reason why to give them more of the car. But the bottom line is, you want to keep the customer engaged, and you want them to know there's nothing you're hiding. When you're back in the showroom with the guests, you want to show them the information and back it up with hard facts. Now, you already went outside with them. They saw the vehicle. They know what you were looking at in the vehicle. Now, when you bring up the appraisal, Show them what it's going to cost, the reconditioning that you're going to have to put in to make it right for someone else to buy this car. People are fair, and if you're honest with them, they'll be honest with you. And finally, give your customers credit. They've shopped around. They have an idea of what they feel their car is worth. Whatever system you use, they all have tools to show you what the cars are selling for in the market. Share that with your customers. If you're fair with them, they'll be fair with you. So when we posted that video, we got immediately, within the first date, over 500 views. These were customers that now were calling us saying, wow, do you guys really do that? Well, when you say you're going to do something, you definitely got to back it up, guys. And we did, and the customers loved it. And then what happened is, we pushed this to everybody. So we didn't just put, leave this on our site. We had it pushed to every other media site that would take it, whether it be YouTube or social video or whatever it was. We wanted to get it out. And then we wanted that data going right back into our website to increase our relevance and our Google things that all these of you guys all understand. I mean, I understand the back indexing and all that, those, you know, those words that I'm learning at these conferences. We optimize video with targeted search terms to maximize our visibility. And I didn't write that, guys. Someone wrote that for me. <laughs> but really, the reality was we increased visibility of our positive content. We knew that we wanted our customers to see what we wanted them to see. We wanted them to see the reality. Because the reality is, is that nine out of 10 customers are happy with us. Why shouldn't nine out of 10, why shouldn't nine out of the 10 spots be positive? And we knew we could do it. So by using video to push the negative content out of page one, we increased the post of, the, of our happy customers, that 98%, and the results were staggering. So here's human behavior. It doesn't take much to make an unhappy customer motivated to give you a bad review, does it? I mean, guaranteed they're gonna do it probably while they're in your store. But the reality of it is, only the super crazy, fanatical, happy customers are gonna be motivated to do reviews. Unless you ask for it. And we wanted more of the happy customers. So what we did is we started to ask for it. And the process that we did was simple. We use Business Raider because we could do it to any, anybody that does reviews in-house. And it's more of a blog site, but what I wanted to do was I wanted to capture how my customers truly felt about the experience they had with us while they were in the dealership with the car. Any negative content was immediately alerted to the managers and we got involved to fix it. So I wasn't going to wait till the customer got home and told 10 of their friends. I was going to take care of it right then and there and fix the problem. 
I wanted raving fans, not raving lunatics. We addressed the concerns, we collected the reviews, and whether it was good or bad, we said, listen, please, post your, post your review, post how you feel on Facebook or Twitter, whatever you feel comfortable with. Because here's the reality, guys. You need to get the consumer, we needed to get the consumer, to go on the digital space where they felt comfortable. So it doesn't make any sense to have a customer that doesn't have a Gmail account and never uses Google, to go to Google. If he's comfortable with Yelp, then God bless him, let him Yelp away. I wanted them to use whatever media they felt comfortable using. And once they did it, we made sure it was published to every site we could possibly get it to. So now, since Google ties everything to their search results, now when you type car dealer in Davie, Florida, well now Rick Case Honda was relevant. Now, when you went to page one of Google, you couldn't find anything but what we wanted on page one. And you went to the bottom of page one, it was 100% controlled by us. You wanna to go to page two, three, and four, good luck trying to get some negative content on Rick Case because we were gonna be proactive in making sure that that 98% voice was heard way before that 2% voice ever gets heard. <clears throat> so to recap our strategy, we used increased posts with our happy customers. We used our video and social content to push everything off of page one. We decreased the negative content. We, we used trust by involving our customers in the process. When you get the customers involved, and they have buy-in. I mean, who here has a cell phone? Everybody, right? Who here's cell phone has a video? If you go to my Facebook site, you'll see many customer testimonial videos. It takes 10 seconds. All my guys have iPads are taking videos all day long. I want video on all the time. We put it in Facebook, we put it on the internet. We want people knowing how our customers really feel. If we're gonna sell 800 cars a month, and five people are gonna be unhappy because unfortunately it's gonna happen, then I want at least 700 of them being way happy. If you address it early, you can fix the issue. And like the video on the trading, we use customer video content that they felt comfortable, stuff that they wanted to see. We took polls. Some customers, you know, we've done body shop videos that they don't know that they can use different insurance companies. We use the trade-in process so customers understand that they can trade in a lease vehicle, that we're gonna be with them the whole step of the way, that we're gonna educate them, that we're not trying to hide anything. We want them to be part of it. I mean, it's crazy. They go with the appraiser, the appraiser goes in the car, the appraiser hears a rattle, he says, oh, what's the rattle? I haven't meaning to get that fixed. Last time I came to service, I said it was a CV joint, but I really don't wanna spend that money. Oh, not a problem, don't worry about it. Keeps driving, by the way, man, these brakes are squeaking, huh? Yeah, I know, I gotta get that done. Been... So now when you get back, to the store and you give them the worksheet to work the deal and you hit them for a thousand dollars in reconditioning, they're not gonna argue with you. They're not gonna be a pissed off consumer. They're gonna understand because you educated them in the process. So we have several sales people, but I'm very lucky to have the number one salesperson in Honda nationwide working in my store. And this is just a short uh, video on how he feels about the process. Now, Shahir sells 45 retail units every single month. He has a full-time assistant. He works like a madman. But let me tell you, the guy delivers rock-solid customer service, and he gets five-star reviews all the time. I'm here with Case Honda, and I'm talking with the number one Honda salesperson in America who works here. Um, let's go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Shahir Hussain. Very nice. nice. Uh, let me ask you something. Talk about having a tough name to work with there. Shahir Hussein is his name. Whoops. What did I do, Shahir? You got to go to the computer. Sorry, guys. It's all right. Why don't I just go ahead? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, just flip it. There you Case Honda, and I'm talking with the number one Honda salesperson in America who works here. Um, let's go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Shahar Hussain. 
Very nice. nice. Uh, let me ask you something. As a, I've sold cars a long time as well. And when the dealership came to you and asked you to start getting your customers to fill out reviews at the end of the sales process, uh, what, what is your motivation to actually get the customers to do the reviews? I mean, why would you do this? Motivation from my standpoint is that this is where it gives me a little bit of view. Because a lot of times, I mean, most of, 100 percent of the times, I would treat my customer uh, great. So I want that to be out there that I don't care about my customer, but I'm going to come back. And when people go online and they Google or they, they put in my name and as a referral, or all these referrals come up and say, listen, this guy had a really good, uh, he had a good rating on you, he had, um, they had a really good rating on me on the dealership. Experience that they had, and why wouldn't you want to pass that great experience on to a friend or a family member? You know. So, so you don't feel it interferes with the sales process as far as with the customer. Quite the contrary, I feel that it helps my sales process. It helps me to uh, sell more cars, more, more customers. And well, normally, I would. So, I mean, I said the customers are tech set, and then the people are going online. So it doesn't. It actually enhances the sales process. I say, like 100. I don't see how it would hurt you. Today. I don't see. That. So. So here's a salesperson who gets it. Sells 45 cars a month. Skipping steps would be easy. Not asking for the review would just be, why not? But he gets it that he's building his own brand within a brand for social media and reputation management. So our strategy was to increase the visibility of the positive, decrease the negative, and we wanted to turn the raging man into the raving fan. We wanted to improve resolution management process and monitor and respond quickly to the negative posts. Now, Facebook is one of the areas where we've really started to excel with this. Now, we do some things that are maybe a little bit different than some of the stores. We don't have one admin for Facebook. I got about 12. If you're a department manager or you wear a white shirt in my store, there's a good chance you have admin access to, to Facebook. And that access, you have scheduled responsibilities of what you need to do and make sure that you're working towards that social media content that we're looking to post. So everybody's got skin in the game. I would much rather coach somebody on telling them not to post something again than not having anything posted at all. So here's another example on Facebook. This was on Father's Day weekend. Customer Samantha goes to FSU, crashed her car, was in the body shop, was expecting a call back, didn't get a call back, she was frustrated, she put a post on Facebook, pretty negative post, and she was really frustrated on our page. Well, the admin immediately saw it, was one of my sales managers, and answered it right away, apologized and said, we can we take care of it, not a problem. I happened to be at home, going through Facebook, checking it out, and noticed it, and I said, Samantha, I can't find any contact information, please send me your contact information, we'll take care of it right away. We did, we resolved the issue, we got her the information. Now she feels embarrassed that you know, so many people got involved. She went on her website uh, to all of her friends and said, man, look at these guys, look what they did. That went to their friends. Over 2,000 people viewed that. It cost me nothing. It's something I want to do anyways because I want to treat my customers like they're their best friends. But if you're not engaged, you'll never get that done. Execution is key. You need to get involved. You need to empower your people to get the job done. And there's got to be transparency. Don't try to fake out the customers. The customers already know. All the information's out there. So if you do things right and you do things the first time, you won't have any issues in reputation management. So our experience, we know that when you focus on creating those raving fans, the reputation management part is easy. So this is where our customers vote the expression. That's the survey. That's the post. But there's a whole lot of things that have to happen before that ever gets put online. If we take the time to think about what precedes the post and work on a strategy and executing that strategy, then you don't got to worry about reputation management. It's just the way we're going to run our dealerships. So here are the takeaways. Use the videos and social sites to increase your digital footprint. Make online customers aware of your advantages. Guys, video is king. Get it up, get it out there. People want to see it. Create processes around reducing and preventing negative content. That's a no-brainer. You don't want unhappy customers. It's not good for business. Don't think about selling a customer once. 
I look at every customer as a nine car account. I don't, when I sell a car, it's the beginning of the relationship, not the end of it. You need to treat all your customers the same way and make sure your people understand that so that you can start to build that reputation. You need to leverage technology to reduce your efforts and maximize your exposures. We just went to all iPads on our sales force. The more technology you can leverage, guys, the better partners you get, the easier your life is gonna be. And you need to realize that social media is the new CRM. Forget about CRM, social media is your CRM. And if you don't realize it, start to look at it, guys, because the power of the people is much stronger in the social space than it is anywhere else. And you definitely gotta get your employees involved. I mean, I, every time I talk to people, it's like, oh, I gotta get the employees. Guys, it's, we, we talk about it every day. This isn't something we preach, and I just wanna say something that sometimes there's a misconception. My story is incredibly broken. I'm only about 45% of where I wanna be. We are by no means a perfect dealership, but every day we work on getting a little bit better. We understand that people are gonna make mistakes, but they know that the next day I'm gonna remind them and we're gonna go at it again. And I know every day I'm gonna get a little bit better than I was before. And it, the way I look at it is, if we're selling 600 cars now, and I'm about 45% there, then 1221, getting there again, isn't gonna be a problem as long as I keep working on that path. So next time you see one of these, bad review, think back, what preceded the expression? What caused that to happen? Take a deeper look. Look at your strategy. Where did your people fail on the execution? Why was the experience not what it could have been? And you need to understand that the process never ends, guys. This isn't like you do it once and it's done. This is an every day, all the time thing. This is a new auto business, the new retail business, the new any business. No business can survive in today's digital age without a cohesive strategy to make sure you make your customers your raving fans. Thank you guys very much. If you guys have any questions, we have an answer. Thank you. So, so, what we, so what we did is every month at the beginning of the month, we have a kickoff meeting with all our employees. We buy them lunch, we get everybody upstairs for like, in fact, it's today. In fact, this is the first kickoff meeting that I don't attend this year. So all my staff gets together and we, you know, we congratulate our employees of the month. We talk about the things we did right. We talk about what we're trying to do. What we did this time is we, 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 we told all our employees that we were launching employee pricing for the first time in 50 years of Rick Hicks and we were gonna put out a bonus program for our employees. And we created digital links to Facebook. And the way they got the link is they emailed me that they wanted the link. So my assistant emailed 200 people out of my 420, 200 people that wanted the link, we sent them the link. And then they said, what do you do? I said, well listen, you post it on Facebook and put like a really cool comment about what we're doing. And if the customers come in, because of you, you're gonna get, in your regular bird diver, it's gonna be double. So we gave them a real incentive to do it. Wow, did I pay out. How, how were you tracking? Um... Well, when a customer comes in, they would print the offer, they would print the little site, and they'd come in, or they'd print the post from Facebook, like print page, like they would say, hey, I'm coming in tomorrow, right. give me a call, whatever, They're, you know, the comments were on there under, under sites. And I gave the employees the benefit of the doubt. But the reality was we sold 615 new retail vehicles, you know, in June. I mean, it's not exactly your strongest retail month in the automotive business. It, you know, the power of the people is huge. And each, I think I, I, was at, I was at one of these seminars and they were saying an automotive Facebook user has an average of 350 friends. That multiplies out quick and big real fast. Well, I was paying, I pay, I typically pay $100, but for this campaign, I paid $200 for every, every customer that got referred. And it's a lot cheaper than spending money on TV, by the way. <laughs> I'd rather pay my employees than pay the, you know, the stations. I apologize for being TV stations out there. <laughs> Any other questions? So, 
So you said uh, do video, do it often, do it a lot, and then one of your strengths on your swap was that you already had a video department. Mm -hmm. You already had all the equipment, all the technology, all the processes. What, what do you say to somebody that doesn't have all that, that has an iPhone? Or an I'd say look at people like Greg Cardone. He doesn't have a camera crew following him 24-7, but man, I see a lot of his videos. You're not worried about the shaky camera? Or the well, why would I be? I mean, if I'm trying to educate the consumers on something and, and it's a really good message, then you, you, know, you can go, you can get it shot. You know, just have your ad company or someone tell them, hey, listen, I want you guys for a day to shoot six, seven videos and put it and stagger them out. But if, you know, customer testimonials, hey, can you really tell me that it's really quick about your experience here? And then give them 10 seconds, 10, 15 seconds about how they felt, bam, put it on Facebook, put it on Twitter. Get it out there. Tag the customer. The customer's gonna tell all his friends. Maybe they're a raging Twitter, like Grant has 250,000 followers, and you know, you never know how quick or how big it's gonna go. But if you, you know, it's kinda like, you know, that full pop deal. If you don't always present the fullest price, you'll never get a full, fullest deal. It's the same thing. You gotta put it out there, put it out there, put it out there. It'll hit, and when it hits, it hits big. And we've had some videos that have gone, you know, do you have to sign something saying that you're allowed to post there? Because I know that's a big concern with people is well, I bet, you get well, their picture and you put it on Facebook well, and they didn't authorize it and blah, blah, blah. Typically the way we do it is like, you know, hey Chip, how are you, man? Can, can you mind giving us a quick video? We want to put it on Facebook. We'll tag you on it so you can show your friends. I haven't had one problem. I mean, clearly, it, it, I mean, it could be a problem. I mean, I don't know. I haven't had it. I don't know if anyone's had that problem, but I mean. I'm one of those guys that you mentioned this in your presentation, but do you do the reviews? Do you ask him to do the reviews or not? We do. Um, we ask him to do our business rate of reviews in-house. And let me just go a little deeper into that. Well, why just business rate? Well, business rate does it in-house, first of all. I don't want every, see, people like Google, <laughs> have the, you know, they, they, they think you're cheating all the time. So if, if reviews are happening at Rick Case, then all the work that I've done to get real content on there will be for nothing. So we use Business Radio, which is a blog site. They fill out a review of how the experience was so we can fix a real problem that happened right there in the store. What it also does is it has a questionnaire, and, and part of that question is, how did you feel about, you know, how do you like to be contacted? And using social media, which site do you prefer to use? Things like that, because we want to ask for a review, but we want them to review in their space, whatever they feel comfortable doing. So if they're Yelpers, then I want them to give me a Yelp <coughs> review. If they're Google, I want a Google review. But if they've never opened up a Google account, and they open up a Google account, and all they do is put a Rick Case post, that's going to be a big red flag for Rick Case that we're trying to manipulate reviews. So we want the customer to tell us how they feel, make them raging fans in whatever space they feel comfortable in doing. So could you dig in a little bit more on the business rater thing? Because I was confused. I thought it was just another rating site that was posted out to the internet. It, how it's, it's actually more than that? Uh, it, it's a lot more than that. Um, I get real good analytics from it every day. In fact, you can set it up every couple of days. I get um, all the reviews. So we, do, we have over 1,000 reviews posted on it already. And uh, the way it works is we have questions, whether it's service, you know, we ask questions like, uh, you know, did they purchase an extended warranty when they bought their car? So you can tailor the reviews. You can tailor the questions and, and you get those analytics. Do you have a Facebook? Do you Twitter? Do you, what? you can ask whatever you want and they give you those analytics that you can use to help manage your business. Yes? So you're surveying the customers first to find out what their experience is like, what they're interested in, and then you ask them for a review. So you're not constantly asking them, here, write a review, here, write a review, here, write a review. No, no. The way, the way it works is, guys, you, you know, while, while we're getting your car cleaned up, you're getting it ready to go into finance, you always have about 25 minutes. All my guys have iPads. These guys, they understand, my salespeople understand that whenever a review gets put on business writer in their name, it goes to Google. So when you search their name, now they have reviews. So they want to build their own personal portfolio because that's something that nobody can take away from them. So we sell them on that. We teach them. We educate them on that. So now they say, do you mind filling this out before you go into finance? If the customer's frustrated and they say, man, this, is, this process is taking way too long. They lied to me about the price of sales and told me it was gonna, because it happens. Bam, every manager gets a text immediately. Whoa, someone's unhappy. Manager's engaged. 
I can't afford to get a bad survey. I want to, you know, I'm trying to make rave, raving fans. You know, Honda standards for President's Award are incredibly high. I'd rather not sell a car if the customer's unhappy. Okay, so, so you're essentially, you're, you're having to do a dealer rate of wallet there, mm -hmm. uh, which, which will be picked up by you for search engine, right? Well, yeah, the, the site goes, it's on page one. I mean, it, it's like dealer rater, you know. And, and then you're asking them to go home and, and, and put it on Yelp or wherever. Well, they give me the information. So then later on, we'll send them an email thanking them for the purchase, right. and we'll ask them if they would be so kind to take the time. Did they notice? We noticed you, you know in the in the survey they said that they you know they use Yelp or they use Google, whatever it is. If they'll go ahead and fill out a survey for us, and some will, some won't. But you know when you're talking about a thousand, you're talking about six hundred customers a month. You're talking about four thousand ROs a month. If one percent does it, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need a hundred reviews. I need four or five per site, so that I get consistent content up there on a regular basis. We're really trying to do the right thing. I just want everybody on the digital space to see the same thing we're doing on the store. How, how long is your initial survey? Ten questions, fifty questions. Six questions. Six questions. Just quick. You mind if I ask what they are? If I knew them off the top of my head, we'd change them a lot. So. But if you get with me after you give me your card, I'll be happy to send you the information. Or I think Dan Wick is here from Business Freighter. He'll, he knows them by heart. That's crazy. So it's that easy to change them, that easy to tweak it? Absolutely. It, it depends on what you want to find out and what you're working on. Now, you know, we get reviews at, at Business Freighter from our hair salon, from our, from our car wash, from everything. So, I mean, we get some bad reviews. The car wash is taking too long. There's not enough soap in the car wash. It's, I mean, it's great. We fix it, you know. The whole purpose is I want to know the good and the bad. I don't just want good reviews. I want real reviews so that I can fix whatever issues we're having. Do you have a process in place to drive reviews when we fix operations as well? Absolutely. What's that look like? When the, customer, when the customer comes in, when they come to pick up the car in the active delivery, we have computers set up right there, and we ask them if they would be so kind of to take just 30 seconds or 45 seconds to fill out a quick review. Because Honda's got some crazy questions on their service, like fairness of charges. <laughs> you know, like who thinks that their charges are fair? <clears throat> you know, so I want to try to educate them on becoming raving fans. I want them to know that we're striving for five star service. And, you know, I, I'm trying to outweigh the good. If I overwhelm them with good, then I can minimize my bad. All right, guys, thank you very much. I really appreciate all your time.